Hello again. Welcome to Inside the Summit League. Tom Neiman with Brad Newitt. And right in the thick of the basketball regular season, Newitt, things kind of holding steady at the top of the standings right now for the women. Some moving around going on on the men's side this week. Came into the week with four teams tied. Not the case after uh, the weekend. Yeah, after the weekend, South Dakota State men separate themselves and Maybe for them the best thing was they only had one game this week, so they kind of had the luxury of watching everyone around them lose and drop some games, uh, and then they did very well on their home floor beating IUPUI, and right now they stand atop, but I think there's still a lot left to happen. All right, uh, the wow story of the week in men's basketball, Max Landis at IPFW. He had 44 points against South Dakota on Thursday. That is the most points by a Summit League player so far this season. You did this game live, knew it, and that kind of had to be fun to watch the performance that he put on. It certainly was. I mean, he absolutely went off. He dominated the game uh, from the perimeter. Hit 11 threes. That tied a school record. The 44 points set a school record uh, for threes in a game that Landis had and uh, I mean just an unbelievable individual offensive performance that we haven't seen uh, in the Summit League anything like that for quite some time maybe since Nate Walters went for his 50 plus. All right uh, next game though North Dakota State uh, Fort Wayne at North Dakota State NDSU holds Landis to nine points in this game they hold the Dons to 46 points as a team after Fort Wayne had scored 95 with those 44 from Landis. How do you explain this? Uh, I don't know how you explain that. That's college basketball, but a lot of credit needs to go to North Dakota State and Dave Richmond, the game plan they had defensively, uh, really just shut Landis down, and he only hit two shots in this game in Fargo. Um, but, I mean, great. I mean, that's kind of what NDSU is known for. I mean, they've always been a really good defensive team, good defensive program. They're very solid, very fundamental. They, they make you earn your points. And it was also a cold shooting day by Fort Wayne. I think that had a little bit to do with it, too. But you don't see those types of extremes, you know, in, in a two-day period very often. But for Fort Wayne, it did happen and on the road. North Dakota State moves up to fifth place now after two wins over the weekend. Uh, Fort Wayne is 8-3 and three right now in the league, and they're in second place, a half game behind South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits have won five games in a row, and we'll talk more about them coming up in a bit. The big women's story, to me, continues to be the Coyotes. Uh, South Dakota is crushing teams right now. They uh, have won their last four games by an average of 28 points. The impressive thing to me in what they're doing, Tom, is how well they're playing defensively. And this is a USD team that's always been excellent offensively. They've, they've dominated teams. They're great in transition. They put up a lot of points. They scored a high rate. They are holding teams down now defensively to go along with that. They hold Denver below 30% shooting. Two days later, Omaha 36% shooting. Those are games on the road, too, that South Dakota is doing this for. If they can play that well defensively, they are going to continue to dominate the summer league play. South Dakota has won nine games in a row. Uh, South Dakota State right behind them, one game back in the standings. And we'll get to the women's uh, week that was coming up in a little bit. But when we come back, the weekly fast break on all of the games in men's basketball. And don't forget about Denver. The young pioneers make a move this week as well. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back now to men's basketball. Western Illinois, remember, beat Wisconsin in the first game of this season. But when we got into, uh, into December and January, knew what the Leathernecks got into a streak where they lost 11 in a row, including their first nine Summit League games. Tons of talent there, Brad, but why, what are your thoughts on why Western Illinois has struggled, especially in Summit League play this season? Well, it starts with close games. They didn't win any of them there in January. But I think this is a team that has really struggled with their identity, maybe defensively more than they have in the past. Uh, when you're not getting stops and you put a lot of pressure on yourself offensively, it gets very difficult to win games, but... As we're going to see here, they turned the tide this week and really pulled the biggest upset of the week in the Summer League. They did get their first league win on Wednesday. It was at home against Omaha. Uh, Western Illinois took its first lead early in the second half on a bucket by Tate Stensgard. Stensgard ends up with 13. Covington, Garrett Covington, leads him with 23. And then Mike McClusack comes off the bench with 14 points and 11 rebounds, and Western wins 83-76. to Great job in this game defensively. Like hold Omaha to 76, and Western Illinois got to the foul and they shot 34 free throws in this game compared to Omaha's 14 so they defended without fouling as well 
and that's what led them to win. All right, on Thursday, North Dakota State at home against Oral Roberts. They just kind of traded runs back and forth through this game. Uh, Obi and Megano, 20 points for Oral Roberts, but only six of those coming in the second half. And North Dakota State lost their leading scorer. Paul Miller went out with a knee injury, did not play in the second half, but A.J. Jacobson got hot with some threes in the second half. He leads North Dakota State with 20, and the Bison find a way to win, as they usually do at home. Yeah, they've done this a few times already this season, but Jacobson huge in this game, especially in the second half you lose Miller and you need someone to step up and fill that scoring void Jacobson's the guy that does it and then North Dakota State defensively great job guarding Omega no they only let him shoot four free throws in fact that's all the free throws Oral Roberts got as a team in this game so they really made uh, Oral Roberts earn it and that was the reason they were able to get the win Malik Clements came in with 14 as well for North Dakota State uh, good game for him and that win for the Bison. Here's the Fort Wayne game uh, at South Dakota on Thursday. Max Landis goes for 44 points, 11 of 15 on threes. They get uh, 13 points, 10 rebounds from John Conchar, and then D'Angelo Stewart off the bench with 17, and Fort Wayne rolls up 95. Well, they're playing really well as a team. I know Landis, he got all the headlines in this game, but he has a great supporting cast around him, and uh, they were really hitting on all cylinders that night in Vermillion. Denver at home on Thursday, uh, win over IEPY 53-51. IEPY was up by nine at halftime. They led by 15 in the second half, but the Jaguars only made one shot from the field, one field goal in the last 10 minutes of the game, and Denver came back and won it. Well, unfortunately for IEPY, that's kind of the definition of really the wheels coming off the bus. It did the last 10 minutes. They played a great 30 minutes up to that point. Along with the only making one, they turned it over four times, and that led to some easier baskets for Denver that really helped fuel that comeback. And a uh, big win for Denver, and we'll see that really gave them some momentum heading into the weekend. Yeah, the Pioneers come back on Saturday at Omaha and win there 75-72. to Denver led for more than 38 minutes of this game, and they beat Omaha up on the boards, a 39-25 to advantage in rebound. Exactly, and 16 of those offensive boards for Denver. That's not their forte at all, but they kind of flipped the table on Omaha and did it there, and then also shot it really well from three. And we know when they do that, they are a very tough team to beat. Christian Mackey had a good weekend for Denver. 14 points and nine rebounds in that win for the Pioneers. Also on Saturday, South Dakota comes back after giving up 95 to Fort Wayne. They rebound with a 91-79 win against Oral Roberts. Obi and Megano had 26 points and nine rebounds, but the Coyotes got hot, had six guys in double digits, and they shoot at 53% from the field. Well, if there's a team that needed a win, it was USD. They had really struggled. They were one, uh, only one win in their last eight games before this, and they finally really caught fire offensively. We've seen them do this other times during the year, but it really all came together for them. They had six players in double figures, really shared the ball well, put 91 on the board. Trey Norris, 15 points, eight assists in that win for the Coyotes. And then we touched on this one. Fort Wayne goes to North Dakota State, and the Bison hold them to 46 points, a season-low 28% field goal shooting for uh, Fort Wayne. And North Dakota State did this to South Dakota State earlier in the year and just locked him down. A.J. Jacobson with 20 points in the win for NDSU. Uh, that's a big win for NDSU. That really put them back up near the front runners of the Summit League. Uh, brought Fort Wayne down then too, but great defensive effort. And Paul Miller, again, did not play in that game for NDSU, but they do expect him back uh, at some point here. And then South Dakota State at home against IEPUI on Saturday. 80-58 to Jackrabbits. George Marshall came out hot for SDSU. 11 of his 16 in the first half, and uh, the Jackrabbits just kept it rolling. They played some pretty lockdown defense on the Jags. They really did. They hold them to 36% shooting in this game, and this was the only game of the week for South Dakota State. You could really tell coming out they were primed, ready to go. Uh, really played well offensively, too, shooting 53% and got 35 points, Tom, off their bench. So great contributions there. Mike Dom with 16, Connor Devine with 8 for South Dakota State coming off the bench there. This week, uh, big games in Omaha. South Dakota State is there on Wednesday night. North Dakota State goes to Omaha on Saturday. Denver at Fort Wayne, another good game coming up on Saturday. Up next, the week in women's basketball, Danielle Lawrence and IEPUI just short of the century mark in their win over the weekend as the Jaguars look to keep pace with the front runners at USD and SDSU. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. 
Welcome back now to women's basketball. Western Illinois took a huge hit uh, after last season when last year's Summer League Player of the Year, Ashley Luke, uh, transferred to Green Bay. But Western Illinois is still putting together a pretty good season so far without her knew it. Western at home on Thursday, they get a one-point win over Fort Wayne, 88-87. Uh, Mallory Boyle with the jumper at the buzzer for Western Illinois. And uh, Fort Wayne, despite only turning it over five times in this game, they shot it pretty well, but uh, a good win for Western Illinois. Well, they're scoring at a very high level right now, and they're also doing a great job on the boards. They out-rebound uh, Fort Wayne this time by 15. They're getting extra possessions, um, and because of that, they're able to get the win here. Sophie Reichelt had 25 points, 9 rebounds in the win for Western Illinois. South Dakota State is uh, one of the teams that's hot right now. They only shot a 34% in this game at Omaha, but they held the Mavericks to 29% shooting. Uh, Lexi Alexander, Gabby Bover off the bench to lead a, a victory here for the Jackrabbits. Well, and they turn Omaha over 26 times as well. South Dakota State getting it done defensively. They are the best defensive team right now in the Summit League. If they can get their offense going and clicking, then they could become really, really dangerous. Oral Roberts keeps winning close games. Uh, at home against North Dakota State on Thursday, 59-58. Faith Iam with a layup with about 15 seconds left uh, to win it for Oral Roberts. She had eight points and 11 rebounds. North Dakota State had taken the lead with about 20 seconds left, but Oral Roberts with the uh, last bucket there to win by one. On Friday with South Dakota, we touched on this when they beat Denver 79-33. 36 points off the bench for the Coyotes uh, in this game. They get nine from Jasmine Trimboli, Kate Liveringhouse, get everybody involved in this win. And then on Saturday, knew it, IEPUI scores 96 at home against Western Illinois. 87 again for Western Illinois in this game. But IEPUI makes 10 threes, and they get 34 points from the Player of the Week, Danielle Lawrence. Well, Lawrence is playing at a very, very high level, very efficient player uh, right now for IUPUI. Like you said, she hit six three-pointers, six of eight from deep in that game. And not probably the way I thought IUPUI would win this game, Tom, putting up that many points. They've been very good defensively, but 96, what an impressive win. All right, Jags win there, and then South Dakota State on Saturday at home against North Dakota State. Uh, Clarissa Ober with 17 points, 11 rebounds, four blocks. Macy Miller, 15 points and six assists, and uh, South Dakota State pretty much rolls in this one. Well, they do it again, and you look at you know, the shooting that South Dakota State put together in this game. They really got it together in this game offensively. They had struggled at Omaha, but they played well at home. They had 20 assists as a team. I thought they really shared the ball well. And then they did what we've been talking about, what they've been doing in all their games this year, which is holding teams down defensively. Uh, the Bison only 32% shooting. Yeah, NDSU 32 in the game before that, SDSU holds Omaha to 29%. On Sunday, a couple of games. South Dakota, a win at Omaha, 70-55. to Nicole Seacamp with 15 points and six assists in that one as the Coyotes uh, keep on rolling. And then Oral Roberts, another close win for them in overtime at Denver. Oral Roberts was down by five with about a minute left and had a shot to win it in regulation, but they do win it in overtime, 59-56. Well, Oral Roberts is just interesting. They, they keep staying near the top of the standings, Tom, and they, they won a lot of close games this year, but they've got a very difficult weekend here up ahead. they got to go to South Dakota and South Dakota State. All right, in that loss for Den uh, Denver, Jacqueline Poss with 14. But, yes, here are the games coming up on uh, the weekend. On the women's side, Thursday, Oral Roberts is at South Dakota State. And then, uh, as you said, Saturday, ORU at USD. IUPUI is at Denver on Sunday in one of two games on the women's side on Sunday. Thanks, Brad. Uh, up next, the leader of the pack in Vermillion, Nicole Seacamp. Thought she was done and gone after last season, but the awesome Aussie was granted another year to play. She has turned that into a sensational senior season. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back. Nicole Seacamp had played three seasons at the University of South Dakota. She had led the Coyotes to the NCAA tournament two years ago. She had been the Summit League tournament most valuable player twice in her career. And after the end of last season, she thought that her college playing days were over. But there was a snafu with the NCAA when Seacamp first got to USD. That was resolved. Seacamp was given a fifth year to play this year, and she is making the most of it. Here is Chase Christensen with the whole story. 
When Nicole Seacamp walked off the court after USD's one-point loss to Northern Colorado in last year's WNIT, Coyote fans thought they had seen the last of her after three memorable years in a Coyote uniform. A native of Renmark, South Australia, Seacamp was penalized by the NCAA shortly after signing her national letter of intent in 2011. Seacamp spent a year playing with a club team in Australia after graduating high school, and because of that, the NCAA ruled that she would have to forfeit one year of eligibility. That was definitely hard. Um, I didn't mind so much redshirting the first year because I was like, you know, I still have four years to play, so it gives me a year to kind of get used to America and their style of basketball. And But then when I found out, yeah, that I'd lost a year of eligibility, I mean, I felt kind of, I guess, wrongly accused almost of something, but you know, sometimes you don't expect things and you just have to deal with it. So I, you know, learned to just keep playing. Seacamp, gonna go into the lane, spin move, up and gone! Oh my goodness! In another go around with the NCAA last April, South Dakota's compliance team finally managed to get the NCAA's penalty reduced from a full season to just two games. Coach Mays calls me and she's like, where are you? And I was like, I'm doing a project. Like I thought I told you guys I'm not gonna be there. And she's like, okay, hang on, Coach Williams wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh God, what have I done wrong or something? Just freaking out. And then she gets on the phone and she's like, it's good news, Nick. And I was like, yes. And then I just felt relief. relief. And then I was like, okay, I'll be over there as soon as I can. So as soon as I got done, I like did the fastest power walk slash run I could. I was like trying not to look like a fool running down the street, but I was so excited. <laughs> Well, it's really a, a special thing for her individually and for our program to have a player of her caliber uh, that's able to kind of complete what we feel like, put the finishing touches on a, a very storied um, career up to this point. Seacamp has made the most of her fourth year of eligibility. She was named the Summit Lake Preseason Player of the Year in October and has made strides towards living up to that honor. Seacamp is the only player in the nation averaging at least 16 points, 6 assists, and 3 steals per game, and she's averaging just under 20 points per game on 55% shooting in conference play. Known for her unselfish style of play, when she makes plays it's often by creating open looks for her teammates. But when the big moment presents itself, she's proven that she's capable of taking that last second shot. And she showed everybody with her late game heroics on the road at NDSU, followed up at Frost Arena in Brookings. Back to five, a three for Seacamp is good! Seacamp has also spent the season climbing USD's all-time charts. One of the best in Coyote history, Seacamp's start began with her father on a backyard court in South Australia. He started coaching me when I was about five years old. He started getting me outside on our back uh, gym and just teaching me how to do layups. And I remember I always used to kind of like cry because I didn't think I could do it. And he's like, no, you got this. I just kind of fell in love with it from there. You know, I kept playing and he was always my coach through growing up. And I didn't really ever contemplate not playing it. It just was always there and it was just a part of my life. And I've played it ever since a Summit League regular season championship, a Summit League tournament championship, and two Summit League tournament MVP awards under her belt, Seacamp has what it takes to lead the Coyotes both in the present and in the future. I've played a lot of basketball in my 23 years, so I think, you know, I have the experience and the knowledge that I can, uh, that I can give them so that they can do well. Seacamp for the three! Yes! Nicole Seacamp, humongous three again! For Inside the Summit League, I'm Chase Christensen. Well, from that super senior to a fabulous freshman, the high school player of the year in Minnesota last year is now a Summit League starter at South Dakota State. The story on Madison Giebert coming up next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, Summit League women's basketball teams are full of female freshman talent this year. I counted nine true freshmen in the starting lineups across the league this week. One of them is a jackrabbit. And in one year, Madison Giebert has gone from high school player of the year in Minnesota into the first five in the lineup this season at South Dakota State. Four consecutive Minnesota State tournament appearances, a top 100 recruit out of high school, and Miss Minnesota Basketball 2015. 
It's safe to say the accolades, like Madison Giebert's three-pointers, just keep adding up. I think a lot of pressure's been on Maddie. I think she puts a lot of pressure on herself. But that pressure's been no sweat for the SDSU freshman. The Apple Valley, Minnesota native has been a shining star in Aaron Johnston's system, starting from day one. I definitely wasn't exactly expecting it. Um, I just kind of came in with the mentality Whatever they need me to do is what I'm going to do. I think she's played well in a lot of ways. She's defended well. She's given us some minutes at the backup point. Um, she understands what we're trying to do offensively. Uh, just a good part of what we're doing. But of course, what most people notice about the freshman sensation is her outside shot. And after some early season struggles, she knows it'll be a weapon for years to come. I am a three-point shooter, so obviously making threes, but also um, Defensively, just really always being um, aggressive on defense. And um, so I think just like overall, like just coming in and being aggressive and bringing that fire. They really don't look like brand new players anymore. I think they all have a really good idea of what's expected and what the, uh, the goals that we have are and how we achieve them. And thanks to David Brown for that story. Maddie Giebert, by the way, has a twin brother, Drew. He is six foot eight, and he is playing college basketball this year at the University of Sioux Falls in South Dakota. We will see you next week on Inside the Summer League.